Chapter 6 It was the very next day that was the last time we would ever see Lizzie alive. Dill, Tony, and myself were all hanging out in my basement, as we normally did, just trying to figure out how we would spend our day. After an argument over what game to play finally came to an end, I heard a knock on the door upstairs and left the guys to check it out. I almost broke out in tears of anger when I saw what was standing just beyond the open door. The beautiful face of our friend Lizzie sat mangled upon her head. Bruises, cuts, and discoloration covered its majority. She had her hair draped forward to try to cover most of what had happened to her, but it hid nearly nothing at all. Lizzie, I began but was quickly cut off. No! She screamed at me. You don't get to say anything. She continued to shout at me. This is your fault. But Lizzie, I, I, I was able to squeak out before she once again cut me off and I couldn't get anything more. I told you three to just leave it alone and that I could take care of it. She went on as tears began to flow from her eyes and quickly down her face, causing the same to happen to me. I told you not to try to help because I knew something like this would happen. She broke eye contact with me for a moment. I'm, I'm sorry, I told her as I reached out to put my hand on a, her upper arm in an attempt to try to comfort her. Detective Param is ready to help. I have his number in my phone. I pulled my hand away before it made contact with her and placed it in my pocket to grab my phone. Upon holding it in my hand, I typed in my password and started scrolling through my contacts. Don't you dare. She angrily pushed my phone toward me. His little visit is what caused this. She was shouting once again, while this time pointing at her face. You called him, he came, and they beat me worse than they ever had before. She sounded almost calm at this point, and you are the one to blame. She points behind me. All of you. I turn to see Dill and Tony standing behind me. They must have heard her screaming and came upstairs to see what the commotion was all about. Tony and Dill both stepped forward to get a better look at what had happened to her. Dill reached out his hand to push her hair aside, but his arm was quickly slapped away. Don't touch me! She screamed at him. Don't you dare ever touch me. She began backing away and toward the sidewalk in front of my house. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me. And don't you even think about me ever again. She stated through gritted teeth. But Lizzie. Tony tried to get through to her as he stepped forward, but she just screamed in our direction before sprinting off down the sidewalk away from us. We had decided to let her go. We were hoping that she would blow off steam, cool down, and forgive us with time. I'd hoped that we would then go to Detective Parham together and get this all sorted out. If we had known what was to come next, we would have done everything we could to keep her from walking away from us. Almost two weeks went by before we heard anything at all. But when we did, it was unfortunately not Lizzie, but from Detective Parham. Hello? I answered the phone while walking away from Tony and Dill as they played some video game in Dill's basement. Hello, Aaron? I heard on the other line. The voice seemed a little shaken and stricken with pain, 
made me not want to continue the conversation, so much so that I said nothing further and waited for the voice on the other line to continue. Aaron, they continued, it's Detective Parham, and I've, I've got something to, I need to tell you. The way he said it made me so uneasy that I had to find a seat really quickly before I just fell to the floor. Even if it hadn't affected me so much, I would have anyway, since that was the instruction he gave me next. I told you I would keep an eye on your friend Lizzie. He continued once again, and I have. He took a deep breath before letting it out slowly. This morning, 911 was called, and your friend, she... He paused once again, trying to find the best way to put it. She's not in great condition. You and your friend should go to the Mercy Hospital on Jefferson right now. I quickly ended the call and grabbed Tony and Dill. I muttered something probably just coherent enough for them to follow me up the stairs and outside. I explained what was going on better as we rode our bikes all the way to the hospital. Dill actually lived very close to Mercy Hospital, so it only took us a matter of minutes to arrive. Once we rushed inside the emergency room, I ran to the front desk. Elizabeth Hale, please. I yelled my request to the poor woman behind the counter. You don't need to yell. She seemed taken aback, but began to type away on the computer anyway. He's sorry. Dill apologized for me. We are just really worried. I understand, the woman said as she typed away at the computer. She looked the screen up and down for a few moments before her facial expression changed for the worse. I'm so sorry. She told us without having to say another word. No, I muttered to myself as Tony screamed the same word for the whole world to hear. Tears began to fill Dill's eyes, and I grabbed him and Tony to hold them close. The worst we feared had come to be a reality. I'm sorry, Detective Parham called from behind us. I called you as soon as I could. I hoped you would have time. What happened? I asked him as tears rolled down my face. They found her on the shoreline near the pier. Detective Parent began to explain. She had a stomach full of pills and a weak pulse. He walked closer to us. They thought that if they got her here soon enough, they could save her. They tried everything, but they lost her just a few minutes ago. Not long after I had gotten off the phone with you. I tried calling you again, but you must have already been on your way. The last thing I remember is Detective Perrin putting his hand on my shoulder before I fell weakly to one knee and wept alongside my friends. We held each other until we were strong enough to stand. We weren't able to spend much time with Lizzie before they took her away, and it felt like she had been stolen from us twice in one day. Thank you for listening. I release new chapters every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you prefer to read, I do release all three chapters every Sunday on my WordPress. If you know anybody else who might be interested in this story, please feel free to share.